Alright, what's going on guys, Liam here, and today's video I have a commentary for y'all, and we're going to talk about how King's Isle can improve upon 5th Age PvP. Now, I've played quite a bit of games, uh, I was number one on the leaderboard for a little while, but um, I had to stop playing unfortunately because the cheating kind of got out of hand, so I can't really play the game very much uh, anymore unfortunately, but my point is I've played a lot of games, uh, probably... <laughs> As much as Stefan, he's uh, pretty good right now. He's played a lot of games. He's the highest ranked player right now. Um, I was at 1831, but uh, he surpassed me by quite a bit, as you can see. I don't think anybody else has gotten that high, to my knowledge. So, point is, uh, you know, I've played a lot of games. I have a very good understanding on the meta right now. And, you know, what's going on and what's not right. And the problems that really just lie within the game. For the most part, I will say the meta actually is pretty balanced right now. Like, I haven't seen the game this balanced in quite a long time. And it's just gotten to the point, like, it's so balanced. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's perfect, okay? It's just, it's really balanced. So the RNG is just really showing its true colors now, I guess you could say. And we'll talk about a lot of that in today's video. Now, I'm assuming this will be like a half an hour video. So, uh... It'll be a while. I'll probably put uh, timestamps in the pinned comment below if you're interested in just, you know, viewing through the chapters and that kind of stuff. But um, if you guys are new around here, feel free to subscribe and maybe leave a like rating. Let's see if we can crush 50 likes on this video to, you know, try and get PvP to be better, right? And we are trying to get to 2k subs for 2023. So I'd really appreciate the support, guys. And without further ado, let's get right into the video. Alright, so the first thing you heard me talk about was how the game was so balanced and how RNG is really showing its true colors now and stuff like that. And I want to quickly dive into that part real quick. So when I'm talking about the bad parts of RNG and PvP, I'm talking about, you know, Maycast Brace, Undauntable, uh, Maycast D-Lance, right? I'm talking about um, somebody criticaling 10 times and you're not criticaling once, right? And I'm talking about shad rating rng so i guess we'll start with shad rating rng for example i can run 140 shad rating right now and get out shadded by a guy who has 120 now that doesn't really make sense you know if i'm giving up a whole stat talent you know if i'm consciously making the decision to run shad rating i should get the shad rating regardless if i go first or second right but um Right now, there's just a lot of RNG involved in it, and I really think King's Isle needs to dial down on that RNG. Um, I did talk to Rapid a bit about it. He said, well, 20 isn't that much of a gap, really, so it was just kind of RNG at that point. But I do think that should be a very big gap, because consciously as a player, right, you're making the decision to run more Shad ratings, and you're giving up stats, right? Like, I'm giving up... Uh, 70 crit block which can mean literally like 500 health on a on a shadow hit right it's on a rasulka so i'm making the cautious decision to give that up but the stat isn't paying off in the long run so i do think shad rating should you know be a bit a bit more accurate i guess tracked better and a dial down a bit more uh just to make it so you know what i'm actually run shad rating i feel like i'm running shad rating but if i'm not I feel like I'm not running Shad Rating. I hope that made sense, guys. I just, I've really noticed this in this meta because, you know, a lot of the games come down to, oh, who gets the Shad first and stuff like that. Because it, it's actually pretty balanced right now. I got to give, you know, King's Isle credit where it's due. Next up, I want to talk about the Critical RNG. Now, I've had so many games this, this past week, two weeks, where it's literally dictated off of a Critical, for example. Um, in a Storm Mirror matchup, if you guys don't have a Storm Wizard or you don't really know how it goes, um, typically, aside from Bolt, which we'll talk about later, right, whoever plays better in that matchup will win probably about 80% of the time, right? However, Critical has a big factor in that, right? Um, if I don't Critical three times on a Storm Wizard, like, let's say I don't Critical my Open Thunderbird, uh, I lose, like, 400 damage there. If I don't critical my Rasulka, I lose, uh, what is it, about 600 damage there, 500 damage there, right? If I don't crit my Wanted, it's like 100 damage, right? Um, each time that happens, you can do the math. 
that's just ridiculous. I lost out on like 1200 HP and my opponent, if they critical each time, like they do sometimes, they get that for free. So I do think that part of the RNG needs to be looked at. Um, again, I personally would just revamp the crit system. That's what I would do. I mean, it's easier said than done, obviously, but um, that's what I think should be done. I just think it's really, really unfair, especially in Mirror School mashups. If somebody gets all the criticals and you don't get a single one or a single helpful critical for that matter, it's just really stupid. And I've had games dictate that. I've literally played better than a storm, but because I don't critical three hits the whole game, they live by 10 health. And because they critical every single hit, I die by 10 health. And it's kind of like... My boy, like, I, I played better. I should have won that. But the RNG wanted them to win that. I hope that makes sense. And um, a lot of people might be like, oh, Liam, you're just bad. But, like, trust me. If I if, if I want, like, if I wanted to improve, I look, I, I, I literally analyze my gameplay on how I could improve. It, it, it's not me, buddy. I, I, I did what I could. I literally look at my gameplay. I'm like, okay, I should have discarded that. I should have expected this. Like, it's the RNG. I I, there's, I know there's gonna be some dumb guy in the comment being like, get good, bro. Like, no, you're stupid. Be quiet with your eight rows of seal words, please. But yeah, next up, I want to talk about the Maycast. Um, I think we can all mutually agree Maycasts are pretty dumb, at least in ranked PvP, right? Um, a Maycast brace at the right time can literally save a player the entire game and make it one-sided as heck. It's ridiculous. That's a thing. Um, also, a well-timed D-Lance can literally... Um, lose you a game or win you a game. I've had games where, you know, I'm losing, I got a D-Lance, I win, right? Or, uh, I'm in Shrike, I'm fine, but then my opponent gets a D-Lance, and now he can kill me. And it's like, okay, you know? It's just, I think the RNG, like, it really needs to be lower than main cast, or they should just be taken out of PvP. And I know King Zyle's like, oh, Rapbeard, or Rapbeard, sorry. Um, RNG is like a tool right it's like a it's like a, it's like it's a little a seasoning like a spice to the game right and like i i agree but at the same time if my opponent gets three d lances in a row and like i don't get anything back it's like bruh and i, I don't think it should be equal like i get a d lance they get a d lance i just i would like to see it be out because i think it would make the game a lot more competitive and it would come down to who actually plays better so I don't know, man. That's just what I think. Um, that's my three points I have for main RNG, really. Um, so again, critical, shad rating, uh, may cast, and just like having, like, you know, mere school matchups and the, the RNG and how impactful it is in mere school matchups, really. Next up, I want to talk about ward and resist. Now, my friend Lost Griff made a great video. I'll probably link it in the description below or in the pinned comment if you want to check it out and why ward is unfair. Um, the game right now, in my opinion, is literally balanced enough to the point where no player should be warding to any school right now. Um, you know, people argue Storm's good, but it, it's it's really not. It's just, it's the hitting school. It's supposed to do damage. I have a video coming in, out about this in a couple of days, but um, it, it it's supposed to do damage. If it doesn't do damage, what's the point in the school having 3,000 less health and 10 less resist, right? Like... Just get over it, please, right? <laughs> please, dude. But Word is just extremely powerful. The percentage, 15% extra resist, literally saves people games. And they don't have to play well if they have Word, right? Which is a big problem, obviously. And it's just it's just a really dumb talent in general, man. Like, again, this is my opinion, obviously. But I just think the game is balanced enough to the point where King Salad doesn't need it anymore, really, is what I mean. Also, um, people that like to cheat and run, like, you know, uh, Proof Defy, Stormproof, Stormward, that kind of stuff. I think King Sal should maybe look in, to, you know, banning a couple of those talents as well. Um, that might be a player behavior issue, however, but, um, I do think, you know, maybe banning Ward and leaving Proof in could be a solution. Or, I don't know, just to make it so people can't set that hard, I guess. Just, I don't know, some food for thought, I guess, um... Just to, you know, give King's Isle some ideas, really. Next up, I want to talk about Wild Bolt. Now, I used to use this when I was a kid because I thought it was stupid and funny. And I like to get people mad. You know, that's the only reason I used it, really. Um, 
Storm does not need this card. It is literally a get out of jail free if you play bad card, you know? We've all had it happen where Storm dumps his pips. There's nothing he can do to win the next two rounds. So they send a bolt, they pray to the gods, and they win the game off of purely RNG. Um, there's really nothing more demeaning, I guess. I'm not sure if that's the, the right word, but it's just nothing more soul crushing than just having a guy play bad. Hoping he, like, that the game picks him to win and you lose because of that. It's a really dumb card. I guess, you know, Rapid and the, the dev squad have, you know, their math on why it's balanced. But we've all seen it be stupid. Um, even, you know, myself as a Storm main, that's my favorite school in the game. I would like to see this gone. I don't use it because it's broken. Uh, you know, I've been starting to get people to try and GA it in matches, you know. Just spread the word that, hey man, like, don't use that card, it's broken, you don't need it to win, you know? So I'd really like to see Kings All either audit the card, ban it from PvP. Uh, I think auditing it, like, in Same Bolt, maybe would be the best way to go, though, however. Uh, but, yeah, I just, I really think that card needs to go. Because if you play bad on a Storm, you should lose, you shouldn't always have a chance at winning, so... Yeah, that is the Wild Bolt, Wild Bolt point. Next up, I want to talk about Steel Word. Now, I made a video yesterday about this, I believe. Uh, I should check it out if you want to. Um, be sure to actually watch the video because I know a lot of people just read the thumbnail and dislike the video and then uh, leave a hate comment that I talked about in the video just to show that they didn't actually watch the video. So uh, be sure to actually watch the video and don't be a dumb person like that guy, you know, dude? <laughs> But yeah, uh, Steel Word, it's just, you know, broken right now. Um, cards that are as powerful as Steel Word, just, they really need to be capped, man. Like, you look at a bubble, for example, right? Um, every school gets four two-pit bubbles. It's a skill to track that. It's a skill to use that. Um, extremely powerful card, right? You get a buff the entire game if you win the bubble war. Um, so it, it's capped and stuff like that. Um... People might want to argue, oh, it's capped because people used to bubble like 10 times, which is a fair point. But um, it just if you look at it, having a 25% buff the whole game is extremely powerful. And a card like this should be capped, guys. And I want to kind of apply that same logic to Steel Word. If somebody just Steel Words you seven times in a row, it's kind of like, okay, my guy, um... I passed for 14 rounds, and I've I've done it back. I've literally gotten stewarded seven times in a row. I've done it back two or three times, but because they pack more steel words, I just lose. So again, the best way to fix this problem, King's Isle, is by capping the card. Like that literally just fixes all your issues. So I'm not sure what you do. It's a skill to, you know, expect players to pack three or four five whatever you want to cap it at it it's a skill to be expected to pack that it's a skill to play around okay who steal words first um can i you know get out of this will or will they have more or you, you know there's a lot of there's a lot of variations and questions that go into the cap so i really think that this just it would fix all the problems and i'm not really going to talk much more about it but basically again like i've said in the past is if somebody uses it and the other one doesn't uh, 99% of the time, the player that doesn't use it loses the game. So, I think that's just really stupid. Next up, I want to talk about players that are being poor sports in the game. Now, I've only came across one of these in about my 110 matches I've played on Live Realm so far. Um, but however, I've heard a ton of players report to me. Uh, you know, I get players and they just take me to timer all the time. And now I'm on a 24-hour Q suspension. I know my friend Soro, for example, right? He's a very good balance player, right? I'm not, you know, saying he's bad or he's a timer staller or anything. But he, he gets poor sports that they, they see him. They don't like him. So they take him to timer. And then he can't queue up. So I don't know, man. I just, I think the people, the person who is playing for the timer should be the one that's punished maybe more or they should just be the one who's punished in general. I feel like that makes sense. Uh, for example, uh, let's say uh, Mr. Mr. Timmy, who's exploiting, right? And he's a poor sport. He takes Soro to timer. Um, I think Mr. Timmy should have a longer Q suspension than Soro because if Soro was actively, you know, trying to do stuff and not taking the full 20 seconds for 30 rounds, 
it, it it's probably the other guy that's the issue, right? So Soro should maybe be suspended from Q for half an hour, and the other guy should be suspended for two hours, you know? Uh, that's what I think. Again, I've only came across one of these players in my 100 matches, but um, I did want to obviously uh, get the community's voice out there. That's what I like to do on my platform. So yeah, I think that's an issue that should be looked into and fixed ASAP. Next up, I want to talk about the life school. Now, again, I am a guy that mains life, but I don't heal in PvP. Um, last meta, I did, you know, healing was broken objectively, and people are like, oh, Liam, you're so biased. But now, here I am wanting life to be able to heal better. So don't call me biased ever again. Please stop being stupid. It, it's really, really annoying, and you just make yourself look like a clown, honestly. But... <laughs> Um, yeah, so it doesn't come as a surprise that life got absolutely butchered in this update. Um, the incoming heal stat got taken out. I do think it is smart for King Sal to work on one heal stat rather than having incoming and outgoing. So I do think they're going in the right direction with that regard. However, um, they either need to make better outgoing gear for life wizards or, you know, just make it so their heals are better, right? So for example, um, a satyr before did about 2k. I think now it does 1,000, 1,100. Um, I think a satyr should be doing about 1,400 probably, 1,500 tops with a buff, maybe 1,700, you know? I think that's fair game. I think King Zhao just really needs to test out how much they want those low pips heal healing, heals doing with buffs and without buffs, and you, you can come to a pretty good arrangement on life. Um, now, that being said, I'm actually doing pretty good on my life right now without healing. I didn't heal last age either, so I did have a bit of an advantage coming into this age. But uh, my life has been doing great in this meta. You just have to trade better, really. Uh, trade better, play better, right? That's what I say. So, I don't know, man. As long as you don't get screwed over by RNG, you can honestly do quite a lot of work on a life wizard without healing. But I do emphasize with people uh, who want to heal, but they just can't right now. That's why I do... Want to be buffed for the community but um yeah let's get on to the next point guys next up i want to talk about the cheating and harassment in the arena now cheating i will be putting pictures on the screen right now probably i'm actually five and two against cheaters right now in this age and it's pretty funny i have some videos coming up on the channel pretty soon where we beat more cheaters i know you guys love those videos so i have some more coming pretty soon but um yeah, people run the Pierce Ring exploit. So basically, they get 6% more Pierce. Uh, therefore, they just do more damage in general, and it's broken. So that's a, you know, cheating exploit, right? And a lot of people like to be like, oh, what's the dev's fault? And, you know, that's a fair point. But at the same time, uh, players, you know, shouldn't just look at their ring and be like, oh, hey, I can cheat. I'm going to cheat, you know? Um, it, it's kind of both on the player base and on the developers, you know? So, you know, I, I just, I really think people, you know, who are doing this exploit should get their rank reset. I think that's the most, uh, fair punishment, in my opinion, that King Zal could do. And the harassment, um, basically, if you're a streamer or a known player, uh, even if you don't stream, you get maybe one or two games in, uh, before you get Q sniped and somebody sets for you. Somebody's immune to you, and it's really sad. I know myself right now, for example, um, I can't really play on stream without getting stream sniped, right? Um, I literally log into the arena, and three seconds in, I'll have some guy come up to me and be like, oh, it's Liam, and they'll slap on a ward pet and, like, go in their deck and put, like, sex shields in, you know? It's it's just, it's, it's horrible. Like, the, the harassment, the cheating, re something really needs to be done. I've been talking about this for months now. I know Sauce has been pretty vocal about it as well. Um, there's not really a lot of other content creators who deal with it right now, unfortunately. A lot of them just quit because King Zal doesn't want to do anything, which is pretty sad. But um, I figured I'd bring that up again. I will be making a separate video on this topic for the future. Uh, that's a little, little bit more focused and possibly be using examples and other people's names in it. So like a for that in the future, but um, I just wanted to bring that point up as well. Next up, I have tickets need to be dropped more often, or the, uh, what's it called? Uh, the, the cost needs to be lowered. So for example, right, if I wanna, what is it? If I wanna craft a Thunder Snake, okay? I need 80 arena tickets. Is it 80? No. 
okay, so for example, if I want to craft a Thunder Snake, right? It takes me 40 arena tickets to craft one Thunder Snake, right? So now personally, me and how I build my decks, I need about four of these in my side deck to cycle it well and pull what I need. So if you do the math out, I need 160 arena tickets to play one good game. So, and the only way you can get arena tickets right now is by playing PvP with a bad deck. So I kind of think this system... Yes, I'm thankful for TC Bender. I was asking for this. I'm I'm very thankful for that King's Isle, but uh, maybe reduce the cost of this or buff the arena ticket rate. Um, again, I did ask for a grind, but this is just blatantly unacceptable. I shouldn't have to get 180 tickets to play one game and have one good game where I can actually compete. Uh, I just think that's stupid in my opinion. You can maybe bring back tournaments, which we'll be talking about a bit later during the video, but um. Yeah, I just think uh, the prices are too high here for some of the TCs, and the ticket drop rate when you win or lose is too low, in my opinion. Next up, I want to talk about free-to-play stat mounts. Now, one thing Kingsall did get correct with this update is, obviously, uh, the new the, the crowns gear that is free-to-play now. Obviously, you have to queue up, uh, you know, probably get your butt kicked a couple of times to get the actual good gear you want from the arena here, but, um... Aside from that, you know, you actually can get everything free to play now. However, I don't think King Sol should stop here. I think they should keep going. I think Clockwork Coursers, the Rock Mount, you know, D Lance, Bracify. I think you should be able to earn all this stuff by, you know, free to play via a challenge maybe in PvP. Like, I don't know. Uh, get Bracify by winning a game with no shadow hits at 150. Something like that, maybe. You know, that could be a cool idea, right? Uh, or just, you know, do it, do the system they have right now, which personally I'm not a big fan of. But, you know, you guys get what I'm trying to say. Um, just have more incentive. Again, uh, this is good, King's Hall. I, you know, I'm very happy that you guys did this. But, you know, there is still more to be done. And I look forward to you guys probably doing it in the future. Next up, I want to talk about the ELO system. Uh, now, this is to be a little bit biased because, you know, when you get to the higher ranks, I'm talking about 1800 plus really, um, you gain about two or three points per win. And if you lose, you lose about uh, 25 to 28 points typically. So you can do the math on that. Um, what, what, what is it? What even is the math? That's like eight games or something. Eight or nine games. If I lose once, that's eight or nine games I have to win to get it back, essentially. That's just ridiculous. I think um, losing is either too much of a punishment or winning is not enough of a good feeling, I guess. You know, um, I think what the Kings should do is set a minimum. So the minimum you can get for winning is maybe five, six, eight, ten. I would go with probably six or eight, personally. And... 25 max that you can lose or 20 that's what i would do personally keep the elo system but just change it around a little bit as of right now um it's just it's just impossible to rank up man stefan's doing great obviously he's a good player uh, i'd probably be up right beside him right now if i wasn't a content creator like i said i can't play because people harass me and there's so much cheaters in queue right now but um you know stefan's been grinding i was grinding i got to 831 he's at 8 you know, 1860, but he gets three points per win, right? It, it, and then 1900 isn't even Warlord, by the way. So, you know, you could be like, oh, wait for people to rank up. But I just, I, I still think it needs to be a, a little bit quicker. I'm not asking to make it really quick because then we'll have it like last meta where everybody has a Warlord, right? I want there to be a grind, but um, it, there needs to be a bit more consistency Again, I would go with a minimum of six to eight points per win. Uh, you know, if you're a very high ranked player, right? And maybe 20, 25 per loss. I think, you know, going into the 30 points per loss range is a bit extreme in my opinion. So yeah, I'd like to see that being changed. Also, another thing I want to talk about on this point is um, good players that are staying low rank to either harass other content creators or good players just who I haven't ranked up yet. So um, I'll take one guy, for example, off of the leaderboard right now. I don't know everybody. I just, you know, I can recognize them. I've played them to know that they're a decent, competent player, right? Um, 
Let's look at Flint. Okay, so he's a good balance, right? For example, um, if I'm 1800, right, with Stefan right now, and Flint just started out at 1500, even though he's equally skilled to, you know, Stefan and I, you know, it, practically, right? It, this is not, I, I don't know Flint at all. Just saying in, in a universe where, you know, let's say we're all three equally skilled, but Flint is just starting out and I play Flint, I get nothing for actually beating a good player, right? And if I lose, I lose the world, basically. So um, I think maybe the matchmaking could look a bit more into the, you know, past history of the players games maybe because again it's just i just i think it's really unfair if i play a really good player but he hasn't played yet and it's like oh i just lost like 10 billion rank and or i just gained two rank when i should have gained like 15 you know i think they could look a bit more into that that's a bit more of a gray area though so I don't know, I just thought I'd bring it up because I think it's important and it's something they could look at. Next up, I want to talk about more variety in the TC vendor. Um, now, again, I'm very happy there's TC or Shambos. However, again, uh, they're impossible to get, so nobody's really running them right now because you can't really get them at a good rate. But um, I would like to see, you know, more cards like Rain Beetle for Storm in here. Myth Banshee is a big one. I know a lot of players like that card, including myself. I really, really, really like to see that come in here as well. Um, it's a very good card and just, just, just keep them coming, honestly, man. Like, keep looking at the, I know you have data, King's Isle. Look at the data on what TC players like and just, just, just keep them coming in here, honestly. This is a really good system. Again, I just think you guys need to look at the cost, either buff the amount of tickets you get or reduce the cost to all of them being one. But, um, yeah, just keep the, keep all the new TC coming in here. This is a great system, guys, and I'm very happy you implemented it. Next up, I want to talk about a cap on the TC part. Now, a lot of the community actually likes this idea. Um, so, for example, again, we talked about capping Steel Ward, I believe, earlier. So, uh, I think a cap of three or four Steel Wards is good, in my opinion. Um, if King's Isle thinks Tower Shield is, you know, the biggest issue in the game, which I don't know anybody who agrees with that logic, personally. Um, there'll probably be some dumb guy in the comments that's like, Ooh, tower shield's broken. Just pass and die. My boy, are you good? Anyways. <laughs> Anyways, bro. Um, I don't know, man. Uh, personally, I just think, you know, cap powerful cards is a very important one. But also, man, you could cap, like, weakness. You could cap tower shield to make it more of a skill. Uh, for example, right? If I know my opponent can only tower six times a game, I can count those tower shields and then, okay, I know he's out of towers. Maybe he has set shields now. You know, I think more skills like that for the game would be extremely healthy and I'd be very, very happy about that. Next up, I want to talk about the tournaments. Um, now, I know a lot of players love the tournaments in 4th Age PvP, including myself. I like them quite a bit as well. I think Rapbeard uh, just really, really doesn't like the idea of people farming tickets from it. And, you know, fair point. But at the same time, I do think, you know, players expect rewards from tournaments. And right now, you really don't get any. Um, so either you bring back the tickets, maybe audit the ticket system, or give us new rewards via tournaments. I think that would be a great idea. Also, another thing I want to bring up for tournaments is maybe have some more King's Isle hosted tournaments, right? I know, uh, for example, uh, when we hit a thousand subscribers, I hosted a tournament. Uh, why doesn't King's Isle host a, I don't know, uh, bi-monthly PvP tournament for players, right? You know, you sign up, you win maybe 30,000 crowns, 10,000 crowns, something like that. I think that would be neat in my opinion. But uh, yeah, I do think, you know, tournament players are pretty upset about this, uh, not getting rewards and, you know, again, Either bring back the old rewards or give us a new system that the players can really dig and get into. And another thing I want to talk about uh, for the vocal minority, I guess, of the community is Team PvP. Now, I used to be big into this back in the day as well, guys. I know my girlfriend as well. She actually likes doing Team PvP. Um, and she just doesn't play anymore. She doesn't like Wiz. So, you know, that's that. But um, I know there's, there's a lot of people in the community who like Team PvP. And right now... You know, there's no really, I don't think there's any way to queue up for Team PvP, is there right now, guys? Um, so I know that part of the community is really hurting. Um, so I'd really like Kings Isle to, you know, bring that back, maybe. Even if, you know, it might be a bit unbalanced at the start, you know. Bring it back so some of the players can be happy and have fun. 
and you know maybe you have a separate uh, queue for example so right now if I go here we have the you know 1v1 league what if down here at the third slot was a 2v2 league a 4v4 league right I think that would be really cool just having the leagues in general would incentivize players to play that and what if you like what if you incorporate challenges in with this as well when five games as four storms in like a 4v4 right and unlock the uh Arm Arthurian staff or whatever that 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 code wine you know what i'm saying or the umbra blade i think stuff like that would be cool the challenges the incentive to you know play different types of pvp i think that's a great idea in my opinion but um yeah let's uh get on to the next point point. and on the topic of leagues i guess um i know a lot of players a lot of old players are asking for you know no shambo leagues and stuff like that maybe a no shad rating no critical league at max level as well um i know personally myself i would be intrigued to you know try and play that and see how it goes it'd be a lot more passive a lot more strategic i feel like so i don't know just uh just some food for thought about that um again i wouldn't really get my hopes up about it but i think it's a cool idea that king style might be open for next up i want to talk about brace now um with this audit um tc fortify was 20 percent before but now is 15 percent also tc infal was 20 percent before and now it's only 15 percent however brace in the main deck did not get touched it is still minus 20 percent um now you might be like okay liam maybe the tc's just got worse but the thing that is supposed to counter brace which is infallible or in this case uh flawless um Flawless gives 15% in the main deck and not 20%. So I think King's All could either buff Flawless or nerf Brace, in my opinion, uh, to balance it out a bit. Um, I'm not sure if they have the reasons for wanting to leave Brace objectively better. Again, I don't know, but uh, I just wanted to bring that up because I think it might have got overlooked possibly in the spring update. Next up, I want to talk about search and shambles being better. For example, uh, Jin's defense is just extremely OP right now. Um, you have cards like that, which you convert like four random useless ice shields to actual useful shields on you. Um, I don't know. I think that's just really stupid, honestly. Um, you know, you look at other shambles, right? Where um, let's take the life, uh, the life traps to blades one i think it's called oni's destruction or something don't quote me on that or oni's naturalism i think it's called i'm not sure but um you know why isn't that one universal blades if you know death gets universal weaknesses or something or i don't know myth gets universal shields right i i, I don't really understand their shamble system with that uh personally um i would just like to see you know either the stuff be nerfed or every school kind of be more balanced like i said um Jin's defense is always good but oni's naturalism isn't always good for example so i would like to see uh more ways and more diversity come to their shambo wheel in that regard next up um as the guy well one of the people i guess who founded the mandar strategy with the lemuria update i think it is time that the card probably should be nerfed guys um I, I, again i'm like i'm like the mandar father guys i i was i posted like three videos on it right when the update dropped i found out a crazy strategy with it and then a ton of other people got on it as well it's a lot of fun but i think in this age specifically it is slightly too good unfortunately um i would run it on my myth right now but it's just it's just too good man and again when the Maria dropped, it was it was fun, you know, it was a gimmick, it was like a one-off thing. But now it's kind of like meta almost, and it's just not fun to use all the time because it's meta. So I don't know, man. I think it should have a very minor nerf. I think it should still be good. Um, maybe, you know, do 40% outgoing and plus one pip rather than plus two pips, or uh plus 20% outgoing, but keeping the double pip function. I think a very minor nerf is needed for the Myth Mandar. Again, guys, I, I was one of the first people to do it. D don't freak out. I want Myth to be good still. I'm not trying to butcher the school, but I just I think it's time that it needs to be slightly uh, nerfed in its value. Uh, last but not least, I want to talk about the gear audit and why uh, some schools got screwed over it. Uh, screwed over in it, sorry. 
primarily storm and fire as a, the best example i can give right now really is a death wizard can get more damage than a storm the same pierce as a storm keep the health benefit keep resist and then keep all their good utility cards but then you might be like okay liam just run full merciless on your storm and that might work it doesn't work uh it is physically impossible to get good stats with perfect accuracy and perfect pips but death gets perfect accuracy and perfect pips with their full merciless build so same thing goes for fire the two hitting schools really got i don't know if it overlooked or is a design choice to make the the full merciless gear for fire and storm really bad but um there's it's just you just can't, you can't even use it on a fire in a storm man you just you give up too much stats and everybody else gets to use it scot-free with literally no repercussions at all maybe lose two resist for the other schools or something right it, it's just it's really sad to see and i like to see them maybe look a bit more into that because you know i might not think it's the best build uh for a fire or storm but i would love to have the option to run that build if you know i'm playing for fun or something like that but right now it's just not viable and it's bad objectively speaking so yeah again i think king's Odyssey needs to either buff uh the accuracy probably is the best idea on the fire and the storm gear to make it so you can get perfect accuracy and perfect pips like the other schools but then get the added benefit of the damage critical and the peers so i don't know guys that's it for the video uh this this seems like a 40 minute video i've been talking for i was trying to edit it down as much as i can but if you made it this far, be sure to crush that like button, baby. I don't know why people say it like that. Just, just leave a like, guys. That's so cringe. Ugh, I'm never doing that again. Sorry, guys. But, um, <laughs> yeah, leave a like if you made it this far, guys. I'd really appreciate it. And, again, subscribe if you are new. I'd appreciate it. And, um, yeah, uh, I'm going to go drink about two bottles of water and take a shower and probably go to sleep. <laughs> Thank you for being here. And, as always, take care, guys.